Welcome back to Pagan Valley, everyone. Tonight, we are going back to the first series I analyzed on this channel and one of my all-time favorites in analog horror, Gemini Home Entertainment. We've covered this series in three parts now, and with a new short video out, let's see if we can find any new clues. I'm going to keep this recap extremely brief, mostly because all I did to refresh was go back and watch the series, and then watched my old videos to remember what the hell I even said. And I'm going to invite all of you to do the same before we get started. Go watch the series, or my videos, or the countless other videos trying to put these pieces together. Now that you're back, or you just are waiting for me to explain where we are at, I'll keep this brief. Gemini is a series that takes place in the era of home videotapes that are meant to be educational and informative. Through the series, we learn about creatures like wood crawlers, human imposters, fleshy tentacles in the woods, and an alien planet or being taking the form of Neptune. Connecting everything together, a general consensus is that we are witnessing an alien invasion, but a very subtle one. The alien body, known as the Iris, has been literally rooting itself into planet Earth, in our oceans, in our cave systems, in the woods, and as the Gemini tapes were beginning, this corruption of Earth's nature had begun spreading to humans. And for the longest time in this series, I assumed humans were none the wiser. But then the Lethal Omen video game came out, which created a pretty big twist that connected a company called Harbinge Technology to these creatures. And that was with the Sleep Image Visualizer, which through the series we can see that this corruption in nature can push its way into the dreams of people. Not only that, but we also learned of an old camp called Moonlight Acres that may have known about this corruption for decades turning the creatures in the woods into figures of myths and legends. But in the Lethal Omen video game, we discovered that families that went to this camp also used a sleep image visualizer. Lastly, in the most recent videos, we have found out that Moonlight Acres was more than just aware of the iris. They were actively researching it and how it corrupts humans either with scientists hired by Harbinge Technology or with some other organization. We even saw one of these scientists accidentally get exposed and put into quarantine. And in the last video we covered, we learned that a lot of the staff we have seen in other videos all fell victim to the corruption that eventually took over the camp. And in the video game, we saw a sort of ritual, so it could be possible that these scientists were trying to commune with the entity as well. So if none of that made any sense, then please go rewatch the series. And we'll take a look at the newest video in Gemini Home Entertainment, called Old Bones. Our video begins with what looks like more research of the alien corruption that was discovered by Moonlight Acres and what happened to poor Barry in the Shifting Tendons video. The research reveals a very horrifying fact about what happens to humans when they become infected. The body doesn't fight off the disease like normal. Terrifyingly, the body welcomes the corruption and quickly gives in to the transformation of flesh with no resistance. While that is terrifying enough, it begs the question, is the iris more connected to humans than we previously realized, or is it that much of an existential entity that it makes the body reject its own humanity? Let's move on. The video then returns back to the journal of Glenn Arthur, who if we recall back to the Wretched Hands video before this one, was one of the leaders of Moonlight Acres back in the 1940s. In that letter, Glenn talks about a deal that was made with the creatures of the forest and that sacrifices had to be made. We also know that not long after this, Glenn and a majority of the camp staff fell victim to the fleshy entity in the woods, much like Barry and the other characters had much later. 
but this journal entry was written in 1935, several years before the camp would hunt down a bear to use in the sacrifice. And we begin to learn that Glenn received visions from the iris while at camp. One specific image we see is a beam coming from what we can assume is the Iris or Neptune. This isn't the first time we have seen this beam. If we go back to the Our Solar System video, satellites recorded another beam heading to Earth. Remember this because this is a really important connection for some theories I have later. Also, Glenn saw that whatever came from the iris struck the mountain, which is again something similar we saw at the beginning of Wretched Hands, where something struck the lake on the mountainside. We can also connect the journal entry and the lake footage to the Moonlight Acres informational video, where at the beginning we are shown a similar mountain and similar lake that could all possibly be in the same area. Two days later, Glenn writes in his journal that angels visited him while he slept. He draws what spoke to him, which looks like humanoid figures in suits. Which answers one of the strangest mysteries in the series that puzzled me originally. Who were the men in dark suits in 1935 that began roaming the camp? Originally, I thought this would be when the government got involved, but it seems that they are actually some sort of way the iris can present itself to humans. The next entry of note is on May 23rd, 1935, which would be another week later. A half-living thing is growing outside the camp. And from the drawing, this might be a nature's mockery that we learned in Wilderness Survival Guide. Perhaps this is even the first one to grow since the men in dark suits arrived to camp. It could also be this nature's mockery that we saw near the main lodge of Moonlight Acres in the Lethal Omen video game. Also, Glenn writes that it was like a statue with arms reaching out like a child's, which may be an implication that children at the camp were taken by the men in dark suits. But it could just be how since the plant is small, the adult victim also looks small. The next entry on June 4th reveals a big plot point that I feels like all the Moonlight Acres story has been dancing around. The men in dark suits sent by the Iris offered a covenant, or in a less horror sense, a deal to Glenn. But the video cuts to six years later in 1941, where it says the deal was sealed. And before we move on, we can connect 1941 back to the Wretched Hands video. Glenn in that letter said that they can find a way to uphold the deal by shooting a bear. Which in my last Gemini video, I noticed referenced this animation in the Wilderness Survival Guide video. But if that attempt was in 1946, then Moonlight Acres and Glenn Arthur may have been making sacrifices to the Iris for five years now. Also, they mentioned that the sacrifice was made to the statue that Glenn mentioned in the journal. So instead of this being nature's mockery, it might be this tree-looking object that we saw during the true ending of Lethal Omen. But back to the Old Bones video. After we are told the deal is sealed, we receive a slideshow of old images of Moonlight Acres, probably in the 1940s. We see the statue grow into what we saw at the end of the video game. Also, during this slideshow, the music being played is actually a very famous piece. Not so much for what the music is, but where it was used. The song is Dark Was the Night, Cold Was the Ground by Blind Willie Johnson. It was included on what is known as the Gold Record which was included on NASA's Voyager 1, along with data containing photos, communication devices, x-rays, and more. The Voyager would play the collection of songs on repeat as it journeys to the closest star to us. It's a really cool addition, but I don't think the Voyager would be at play in the 1940s considering it was launched in 1977. However, Gemini's videos have for a majority been in the late 80s and 90s era, and since this tape is like a government documentary referencing the events in Moonlight Acres, 
This could be a sign of the iris's influence still lingering all these decades later. I'll explain more what I mean later, because it's going to play into the timeline of this series. Our video then cuts to 1946, where we are told the deal was broken, which is when Glenn and Curtis attempted to use a bear to sacrifice to the statue. We then cut to the human diagram we saw in shifting tendons, and knowing what happens to Glenn Arthur, this could be representing the physical effects happening to the staff and campers since the deal was broken. Perhaps this is what happens when the storm comes, like what we saw in storm safety tips. We also zoom into a diagram of the brain where we see two parts of it being highlighted as if being affected. Now, I am not a neurosurgeon, so I had to do some research on parts of the brain, and based on what I found, I think this could be part of the limbic system of the brain, a system that bridges our nervous system with memories, emotions, and behaviors based on the observation our senses collect. And in that system, there is a part called the amygdala, which is two pieces that look like this. This could be what the diagram is referencing, and it would make sense for the series, as the amygdala is responsible for a human's fear and anxiety response. And if the iris's corruption shuts the amygdala down, then the human would be in a mellow, unfrightened state, which lines up with the discovery that the human body welcomes the mutation willingly. This only works if that is what the diagram is showing, but let me know down below if this is a different part of the brain being attacked. This is followed by a familiar display of text labeled Iteration 381. It reads, Wretched hands tap my window, a stranger's fangs scrape the walls, sleep beneath the feeding grounds, cancer shares a dream. We then get another iteration that is a repeat from the artificial computing video when Regnat Computing had an AI use a prompt to write a story. Jack heard it again. There is a voice from space. Jack, do you see me? I have become something else. The last one reads, I am still in here, relic of the faithless day. Don't leave me, you bastards. Old bone grows. Before we move on, let's try and decipher what's being shown in these messages. First, the iterations are something we have seen develop and are probably one of, if not the most puzzling part of Gemini Home Entertainment. They were first introduced during Redneck's presentation of artificial intelligence, and while the prompt was focused on the same story, something was bleeding in and corrupting the iterations. Then we saw in the monthly progress report that Regnat Computing was able to communicate with the iris using the prompt feed. In that video, we saw Regnat give the computer and therefore the iris more prompts. And while the iris continued the initial story of Jack, it included other references to humans trying to contact it, including the deep space probe that entered the iris and the death of Jack and Mary Dean during the Christmas party. It seems we are being shown more iterations from the artificial intelligence while communicating with the iris, but something seems different in these. Hear me out because this might sound confusing, but we have been told over and over again in this series that the humans don't die. They are very much still alive when they join the iris and the corruption on Earth in their twisted, disturbed forms. What if this isn't the iris communicating with Regnat? It's the victims still alive within, all of them sharing a sort of collective consciousness. For example, this iteration is Glenn reaching out, his consciousness recalling the same thing he wrote down before he was killed. And this one, this iteration could be from Mary Dean recalling the Christmas party where she and her friends succumbed to the corruption, as she tells us that Jack Dean was first contacted by the Iris. As for the third one we saw in this recent video, perhaps this is Barry Johnson reaching out because we see him appear at the cabin. It kind of fits with him desperately calling to the scientists that quarantined him. Don't leave me, you bastards, I'm still here. 
If not him, it could be Glen Arthur, and the Faithless Day could be the day that he broke the Covenant, but I'm not so sure. I'm pretty sure this is Barry. The last part of Old Bone shows us footage of a cabin in the woods, which might be the Christmas party cabin that Jack, Mary, and Alex were attacked in. We also get this showing of lights appearing behind the tree line, which we have been shown in previous videos is related to the storm, or an attack being made by the corruption. We also get a guest star appearance from Barry Johnson at the window, and it looks like he is mouthing something outside. I am still unsure what he could be saying in this. At first I wondered if it would be the same as the fake people who call for help in the woods to lure victims. But playing the audio over it kinda matches, but I can't be certain. If someone in the comments is good at reading, well, I think he still has lips, I would love to know if Barry is saying something to us. The last thing we see is Barry disappearing from the window as our video cuts to black. So let's parse out all these clues we have gotten. So one of the big things I'm beginning to notice in this entire series is that it looks like Gemini is exploring two timelines, both centering around the awakening of the Iris or Neptune. In Glenn's visions, he saw the beam that struck Earth in the 1930s, and in the Gemini R solar system tape, we saw the Iris shoot another beam towards Earth again. Based on this, I think the events in Moonlight Acres are somewhat of a history lesson of when the iris first appeared in our solar system, consuming Neptune and observing the planet with living organisms. Their landing in the mountains of Alberta allowed them to study humans from the woods until contact was finally made. And how was that contact made? Through Glenn Arthur's dreams. Remember that because it will be relevant in a minute. Making itself approachable, the Iris created the men in dark suits to approach Glenn, explaining that there were beings far beyond Glenn's understanding, which led to the deal that was offered at Moonlight Acres. We aren't really sure what either side would gain out of this deal, only that the Iris wanted Glenn to use the sacrificial statue, and five years after the deal was struck, Glenn attempted to trick the Iris with a bear, which resulted in the first attack on Moonlight Acres, where all of the staff were consumed by the Iris, which then receded back into the woods. What happened after, for the next couple of decades, is unknown to us. It wouldn't be until the sleep image visualizer was created that we see scientists studying the corruption at the camp. So it could be possible that one of these companies we have seen in the series, or even the government, entered the camp to begin researching. And the way they have kept the iris at bay all this time is by continuing the deal that Glint struck. Which is where Jack and Mary Dean come into play. We know based on this image that they were invited by the staff at Moonlight Acres to celebrate the holidays in the camp's Cabin of Celebration. And who signed that card? Barry Johnson and other scientists at the camp. They were a sacrifice, or more specifically, Mary became it as she is the only one shown to have become one with the iris. But why them? Well, the sleep image visualizer was invented by Harbinge Technology earlier that year. And in the Gemini video, we can see that Jack Dean was one of the test subjects meaning he either is an employee of Harbinge, or at least on their contact list. From there, the videos in Gemini proceed as they are shown through the 70s and 80s, documenting the Iris's new conquest. And I say new because we saw the Iris shoot another beam at Earth in the R Solar System video, and whatever that was that landed in Alberta was caught on the weather report footage hitting near the lake which may have been right before the sacrifice on Christmas. What if Harbinge, after creating the sleep image visualizer, once again made contact with the Iris, and again the Iris offered a deal? To advance their study, the scientists made the sacrifice again, 
which was followed by all the research that has been shown in shifting tendons, wretched hands, and old bones. And wrapping up the story of Moonlight Acres, the Iris has now been the one to break the covenant by infecting Barry Johnson and causing a full outbreak at the camp, just like the one Glenn Arthur was killed by. Which leaves us with a majority of our characters becoming one with the Iris, and basically leaving us with Jack Dean, Harbinge Technology, Regnat Computing, and Gemini Home Entertainment as the remaining players on the board. But the scary part is, those other characters aren't dead. They are very much alive in the Iris's collective psyche, pushing their personalities out when given the chance to scream for help through the artificial intelligence. It truly amazes me how much information can be crammed into a 5 minute runtime, and for dissecting events, analyzing clues, and putting together a timeline, no one does it better than Gemini Home Entertainment. With that being said, what could we see in the future? Well, I don't know how much more we can learn about the events in the 30s and 40s. After learning about the outbreak in the 70s, perhaps Gemini is going to present some tapes recently made, giving us some clues to the Iris's next step in what feels like an unstoppable invasion of not just humans and Earth, but our own psyches themselves. But we'll have to wait for more to come out, and you know that this series in particular I will analyze until it finishes, as it is, for a lack of a better term, my first. So if you want to be there for what comes next, be sure to like this video and subscribe down below for more analysis videos like these. And if you want to have your name at the end of the video, consider becoming a patron by using our Patreon link in the description. With that, this has been Pagan Valley, and I wish you all a good evening.